Well, what do you mean? They're not see. Well, I mean, you have you have military officers connected to the anti-disclosure, and you have military officers connected to the pro-disclosure. Well, a threat is a threat. I don't care if I'm for or against well, somebody. Me, I have to I determine mean, if they're for, you, if they're if they're a threat. Well, no, but I'm saying is that is is, is is do they believe that there's an overt threat that we're going to be invaded and they're going to lose our freedom and be enslaved? I'm not getting any any uh, indication that that's the case, but. Nonetheless, there is a fear that there will be a subtle change where um, the power structure will change, and they don't like that, the anti-disclosure people. And that kind of straddles the fence on different military people where they're aligned. So to say military people, I would say, well, it depends where your bent is. You're talking about the protection They'll, they'll interpret the interaction with ET differently than with another ET race. Am I being clear? Okay, but let's get back to, you said this is an, an international group. Is that right still? Correct. Oh. I mean, the working groups are, in terms of behind-the-scenes back-channeling, are international. And so are the PTBs. Yeah, well, they're, yeah, I mean, the PTBs are the PTBs. Right. This is not about nation-state boundaries. No, but, okay, but the individual, you've got six individuals, you told me the six, the group of six that are actually interacting. Those individuals... Because you said they were Marine, Army, Navy, whatever, well, uh, Air Force. They're American. Hold on one second, people. Carrie. Hold on, hold, hold on. on. We have to clarify something. You know, you, you brought up the six, right? Yes. Not all six people connected to the original TDY are here anymore. What does R here anymore mean? Two of them are dead. Dead? Mm-hmm. As you mean dead in, in that they were one, in this one, program and they got killed no. as a result of being in the program? One, one was in a, an honest-to-God car accident that was witnessed by a cop, pure accident, okay? Okay. The other was not killed or did not die from nefarious reasons. That's all I'm going to say. So um, my, my point of saying this is that the, the, this, the team of six are not intact as its entirety any longer. Okay, but there's now four, right? In to our knowledge, but I don't know, what, I don't know where these people are, whether they're, they're it's still part of the program. I have no idea. Okay, but your guy is one of the four, right? Right. Correct. They were originally Americans. Is that right? All of them were Americans on this, on this particular one, as far as, far as what we... In this understand. particular working group, as you call it. Yeah, a working group or program. Okay. And so it's just interesting that, it, you know, in theory, you don't have anyone who's from another country being part of that group. All right, we're going to be very careful here. That's not necessarily true. You have support people that may be from another country. There could be other teams that are interacting with the uh, conformers that we don't know about. Oh, I we see. We don't know. I see. So they could have simultaneous effort. Sure. On, uh, sure. Sure. I'm, I'm, this and this is why I'm so careful about defining exactly what, what we've been exposed to. Right. I, I totally get that. But this whole thing couldn't move forward without the approval and cooperation of the Russians, the Chinese, the Indians, a whole bunch of people in Europe. And maybe even other ET races as well, right? I mean, this has got to be... Are you well, talking about disclosure or contact? I'm talking about disclosure. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And it's, those right. elements are in the place, in, in the, uh, were in place as, as uh, up to the point where our guy was part of the program. Uh, it was international. Something that Stephen Bassett talks about, which you must be aware of, is arguing that the American administration is motivated for early disclosure because otherwise they're going to be trumped by some other nation who could disclose in a maverick way. Is this a realistic possibility? It's a, it's a, I understand the question, but I, I tell you, guys, you know, what the, what's our military budget, guys? $400 billion plus? <laughs> well, I mean, with the R&D and everything about... This, well, you've got to go into the black budget trillions. Yeah, it's... A, I mean... Here's what we, we, we have gleaned and what we've gotten from our source. The country that will say, give the wink and the nod to us, the Americans, who are going to be the ones to puff it and put it out there, are the British. Why? Old money. 
and the construct of the city, London, and they, yeah. they pull the strings in our federal. Okay, system. so the fact that the United States is actually run by London and the Vatican, that... I don't think that's I, ever... I wouldn't true. say that it's necessarily in totality that's a truth. I just, I think that the British, uh, the city of London has enormous influence over some uh, much of our policy. Influence, but not control. <laughs> kind of like the controllers. Just a um, little joke. Well, that's no, but that's kind of that's a kind of an interesting notion because when you actually, you know, the, I think that uh, Power learned a long time ago that you don't actually take a whip and try to choke people and force them to do things. You you, you make it want to think it's their idea. Absolutely. So you don't have to spend all the energy controlling them. Yep. It's it, well, it's some, something something that Marshall V and Summers en- emphasizes, which is in essence what they learned. Et civilizations have learned is to influence as opposed to rule by an iron stick, so to speak. I think that's probably a fair statement in terms of ET. Yeah, but it, it's still... I think that the power structure looks at that and they look at that as a threat. And some people don't look at that as a threat. It then becomes interpretive. And then you get the argument that we, you and Stephen Greer had about the idea of malevolence and benevolence. Mm-hmm. That's, I guess that's what I kind of, you know, just to dovetail back to what Bill initially asked me about, you know, why I contact you guys in the email. You know, that's what I kind of witnessed. Absolutely. That debate. Guys, uh, one thing that I'm, I'm certain of, and I think Sean would say the same, there are so many different agendas on this damn planet. There's so much going on. And I really do think that the, the powers to be, the privileged power and wealth, the working groups, everybody associated with it can't get a handle on it either. It is not monolithic, but uh, contrary to what people think in terms of power or in terms of this whole phenomena or agenda, it is everything. And I think we know some of these programs or some of these agendas. I think it's safe to say with the gray agendas that there's a DNA program with these entities. I think there's something there. I think there's that, 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 that can, bears a very solid argument. Uh, we don't know. We don't know what the conformers are. This is new to us. We certainly don't uh, reject or repudiate the interdimensional phenomenon. No. I think that human beings and their DNA are quite remarkable. We have an ability to uh, tap into different dimensions that crisscross into ours. Um, yeah, you know, the I, whole I would say that that's true. Have they indicated that they are from any particular dimension? No, nothing. Uh, I asked our source that. I said, you know, it could be said that these guys are three-dimensional holograms, that they could be manipulation. He goes, no, they're 3D. Touch, hear, smell, taste, everything. So he... That's his information. Yeah, that's that, that, that's yeah, just his point. That no, that's his experience. experience. Yeah. Yeah, but that doesn't mean where they come from. That just means that they're correct. to come well, into this we don't, we don't know where they come from. We don't know anything beyond our guys' 3D experience with this, these things. Right. Your source has said to you many times, you know, uh, for goodness sake, they're rocks. You know, they're not humans in any shape or form. How do these rocks move and change shape? They're not solid. There must be some kind of a liquid crystal if they're crystallized. No, I asked her. He, no, they're solid. They're solid, Bill. They're solid. Our sources uh, said they're solid. Um, so how do they move? As far as legs, as far as legs, when they had the bio suit on, they could discern like some sort of stumpy leg, okay, two of them, if I've read that correctly or, or heard my source correctly, our source. But um, when they're out of it, um, they just, like, just take a diamond. I don't know how to, a flat diamond and have it move across the floor. So it doesn't change shape? It just floats around? Our guy saw one of these things extend, elongate, and, and touch something up in the ceiling, I, and for lack of better words, a valve. That's okay. what I was referring to. It's like if you've got yes, they, something that is a, like a solid rock, because you use the word a diamond they, a couple they, of times. I just wondered how they did yes, that. Yes, they, also they can, they can pr- uh, produce uh, as many appendages as they want. As long as the appendages come out of a crystal flake right. on them. So it's a little bit like the phenomenon that you might get in a chemistry lab, you know, when crystals grow and then they change shape and then they... Uh, good, that's, good, that's a great analogy, stuff. Bill. Yes, okay. yes, I, right. and I can picture it. Okay, so yes. in essence, they don't ooze into shape. They actually go into shape as being sort of rock-like during their, the, the change in shape. Well, first of all, when they're wearing the bio suit, it's like, it's like humans taking clothes off, okay? They take their bio suit off, and then you get the gem form. They don't ooze, no. It, it appears as that 
from what we get, what we understand is that they just they can shift their crystalline form. But he never saw one of these things take off a bios. No, no, he never saw it. But he saw them. Did he see them move their crystalline form from one part of the floor to another? For uh, locomotion. Yeah. Did they? No. They did they move? In other words, you said they basically crystals. You know, have angular protuberances, for lack of a better word. And so if, if they grow a crystal in a certain direction and that happens to go, then they have to catch up with it, in essence, to move from space A to space B, right? You're, actually, you're, you're ask, asking us to define exactly how they walk? I just wondered if you'd had any information about that. Maybe you just don't know. You know, but it's just a question. I don't know. No, yeah, no, okay, I'm sure. not sure. I'm sure. That's about, I'll, okay. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll ask that question. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah um, it just, I was just curious. I mean, it's, okay. it's, it's like it's really, really important. Do these things have a way of defending themselves? Let me give you what our source uh, has said about human defense against ET. We had no defense, period. End of story. We've learned that. We don't have a defense. There's, there's, there's small defenses, like, for instance, the uh, particular um, military person urinating on a gray. Now, that's, that's obviously a defense. But with, with, with the particular... ET that he's interfaced with, uh, his answer is no defense. But we can't say reptilian because the reptilians are we, they're 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 along for the ride. That's so we don't know what defense they have. We we did not see the reptilians in their own environment with their own ships, so we can't say that. We can say that the conformers um, we have no defense, absolutely not. But 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 obviously, uh, that being said, we also know that we're vulnerable to a very very powerful species such as a reptilian by the the, the assumed fact that you have to bend over, touch your knees, and offer yourself a submission physically, physically. physically. Not, not technologically. I'm talking technologically. No weapons. To, to my knowledge, no weapons were seen, correctly? No, no, but I, I want to clarify this. Technologically speaking, with ET in general, we have no defense. Our source said this across the board. Let me just share some information with you as researchers. Just like to sit around a round table and knock this around. And it'll come as no surprise to you. Some of you may have heard Lindsay Williams talk a couple of Yes, we're ago, very familiar with Lindsay Williams' um, work. Saying that that they're going to bring down the American economy, this is all a kind of planned demolition of America as a country, that there's going to be a war within a couple of years. We've had a private source tell us that that war is very much on the cards and is being planned within 18 months, and we've got a third source that's saying basically that all kinds of uncomfortable things are going to be happening in the next year or two, that could involve war, population reduction, and all the other stuff that's been knocked around on the internet. But we take these sources really quite seriously, and we are not alone in being concerned about these things. But it's hard to juxtapose all of those machinations against what it is that your source is telling you is happening in this program, which is being driven by the presence of these conformers, that's saying, okay, guys, knock it off, work together, value your planet, stabilize the population, don't do anything bad, you're all in danger anyway, you're a wonderful species because you're so biologically complex and we want to help, but basically under our own terms, sort of. I don't understand how these things go together. Is this just demonstrating well, I think how there's two programs here. Are? There's two, let's, or there's two. There's two scenarios working here. There's a human element, okay? That's up to us, okay? Whether we destroy, whether we have wars, whether we do this, whether we do that. Generally, we think this is a non-intervention. Generally, okay? That uh, okay. I think that uh, the what we call ethical, if we can call it ethical ETs, there's a non-intervention. So we can do whatever we want to. We can use the H1N1 virus. We can do all sorts of things to ourselves. That's up to us. That's part of the warning. No chemical, biological, no nuclear. Part of the warning, no chemical, no biological. Are they going to intervene to stop us? I don't know. I don't know. I doubt it. I doubt it. I, I think that's, that's up, to, uh, it's that's up, to, up to us as a species that we, we you know, we got to take care of. This is our bed, guys. This is our house all the way. Yeah, I mean, we can sit there and say, yeah, there's some intervention. There's some manipulation. There's some, some shady stuff going on with some species. Yeah, I, I, Carrie, Bill, I'm not going to debate you on that issue. But... Generally speaking, this is our plan. This is our show. We got to run it. The concern is, if I, I think it, to reword Bill's question, in essence, if they see us 
and specifically, you got, you know, four guys from the United States, and those four guys are, you know, are going to go back to their their homes and families. And there is there's a movement to take down the the economic system of the United States. 